Hey guys, welcome to the Commander Lounge. Today I have for you guys another Dollar General deck. If you guys didn't see my prior video before this one, um, a, a Dollar General is a theme for Commander, and uh, the theme revolves around just everything in your deck costing at least a dollar or less on uh, on TCG uh, market price or TCG mids. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the the guy I decided to pick was Edric Spymaster of Trest. Uh, luckily, because he's been reprinted quite a few times, um, he's just he's under a dollar, which is very surprising because he's a very strong general. Um, he is Simic and one colorless uh, for a 2-2 legendary elf rogue, and whenever a creature deals combat damage to one of your opponents, its controller may draw a card. Um, yes, it helps your opponents out, but it will... Because of how this deck is built, it will help you a lot more than your opponents. And they will actually probably prioritize to kill this thing because uh, it's really good. And it's uh, generally the engine to my deck. I got a couple more things that do the same things as Edric in this deck. But uh, we heavily rely on Edric. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the deck. Uh, first, the Utility Lands. Temple of the False God. It's Ramp. Uh, Blade at Woodland. Uh, ramp. More Ramp. Uh, we don't really need it too much. I really like it for the color fixing because um, I think it's like the the mana cost rate or the the mana color ratio is like two to one in favor of blue. Uh, but we still have to keep it the mana base generally pretty even because of Edric because we need to get Edric right out on turn three. Um, but yeah, blighted uh, woodland will help you get the uh, extra land you need. Like if you need more uh, islands, usually you'll get more islands with this. Uh, next, Spawning Bed, uh, make more creatures, pay 6, sacrifice it, put 3, 1, 1, Eldrazi Scions. Uh, next, Command Tower, uh, yes, Command Tower is under a dollar, which is insane. Uh, next, Oak Palace, um, you know, if I pay if I pay this to cast my general, it gets a 1, 1 counter for each time you've cast it this t uh, in this game. So, it makes them bigger, but it doesn't really matter in this deck. Uh, we're just running it because it's under a dollar. Uh, next, Thornwood Falls, just the double colors. Woodland Stream, same thing. And Simic Guildgate. And then on to the fetches, we got Bant Panorama. Uh, if you guys know me, you guys know I love Panoramas. And they're also cheap, because not a lot of people run them. I think they're really good because they're very aggressive lands. Uh, that can either tap for the colorless, or you can pay the one to grab, you know, the forest or the island you need. Next, Evolving Wild, just... Grab either Island or Forest. Terramark Expanse, same thing. Um, Halimar Depth should probably be Lonely Sandbar, but I don't have any Lonely Sandbar, so we're just running Halimar Depths. It enters the battlefield tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, look at the top three uh, of your library, then put them back in any order. Uh, so we're fine with that. And I believe we run 12 Islands. Um, and then next, Tranquil Thicket is our Cycle Land. Um... So yeah, usually we'll you know either play this tap to recycle it to discard and draw a card. Uh, and I believe I run ten forest. All right, so next on to my ramp package. Uh, we're not really worried about ramping too too much because the um the the mana base is really 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 uh the mana base, you know it's it's really low the the curve is extremely low like I have a ton of one drops this is the most one drops I think I've ever seen in a commander deck that I, especially that I've built uh, but in the ramp package we have elvish pioneer uh, pay green one one when elvish comes into play you may put a basic land card from your hand into play tap. Uh, the reason why this is so good is because with Edric you are going to be drawing a ton of cards and with these creatures they're going to be allowing you to ramp. Uh, so next I have Sky Shroud Ranger, uh, one green for a 1-1. One, one. You may put a land card from your hand into play. Uh, you can only do it as a sorcery, but once again, it ramps you pretty well when you are consistently drawing cards. Uh, next is actually an enchant, uh, an aura, which is uh, one with nature. It's one green, and whenever enchant creature deals combat damage to a player, you may search your library for a basic land card and put that card into play tap. So it's like sort of the Animus, the minus the uh, buff. Um, it's, it seems really good. I don't, I don't think I, I'm pretty sure I don't have any shroud or, uh, hexproof creatures, but I mean, we don't really mind that too much. Um, we're going to be coming out really fast. So, I mean, if they want to answer one of my little unblockables, uh, just to keep me from ramping, I'm pretty much, I'm pretty fine with that. Uh, next is Verdian Emissary, which actually should probably be, uh, uh, uh Sakura Tribe Scout, but I don't have one yet. So we're running Viridian Emissary instead. It's a 2-1 for 2. 
But when it gets put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put on the battlefield tapped. I just like it because it gives it gives like the opponents that thing like, hey man, do you wanna do you wanna let me draw a card? Or do you wanna let me ramp? Like it, it gives them, you know, gives, it's usually not good giving options, but those are both options I'm willing to take. Uh, next walking atlas two for a one one, and then it taps for you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield, which is more ramp. Uh, next on to the uh, I guess you can consider this ramp and. Uh, card advantage, but this is going into the card advantage sec section. You pay Simic for a 1-1, one, one, and when Coraline Oracle enters the battlefield, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put that card in your hand. So really sweet. So, I mean, if they start, if like people start bouncing my stuff, or I bounce all my things back, which I'll show you a card that does that, I'll just get more value off Coraline Oracle. Uh, next is the card that's replacing... Um, uh, what is it? Crystal Ball and all of my uh, creature based decks, and that's Life Crafter Bestiary. Because what's better than Scrying? Uh, actually, drawing a ton of cards. So, yeah, three mana for an artifact at the beginning of your upkeep, Scry one. And whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay green if you do draw a card. So, that's really good. Uh, next is basically Edric on enchantment form uh, Coastal Piracy. Uh, two. Two blue and two colorless. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, you may draw cards. So not exactly Edric's ability, but it's one-sided for us, which is great. Byron of Thassa, uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, two blue, two colorless. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. Uh, but I can actually make creatures an opponent control attack me this turn. Uh, attack this turn, not attack me, but I can make them tap out so I can get in for damage. But we are mainly focusing on just that ability because we've got a bunch of uh, evasion in many different ways. Uh, next, Sigil of Sleep is getting to the removal package. Uh, it's one blue, and whenever an enchant creature deals damage to a player, return target creature that player controls to its owner hand. So I can get this, you know, just keep bouncing stuff back that I don't want to see out. Um, hopefully, it doesn't have an ETB effect, <laughs> but um, but it's just it's just like pseudo removal that I can use every turn when I attack. So I think it's solid. Um, next is Rapid Hibernization. Uh, pay one blue, destroy target creature, it can't be regenerated. That creature's controller puts a 3-3 three, three green frog lizard creature token onto the battlefield. I can think of a lot of cards I would, I mean, a lot of a lot of things I would rather destroy and give them a 3-3 three, three than let them keep it out there. So, it is a solid card. Uh, next is cost, uh, Caustic Caterpillar, once again with the aggressive mana with one green for a 1-1. One, one. And pay two to sacrifice this thing to destroy target artifact or enchantment. So it's a naturalize on a stick, which is nice. Uh, next is Elvish Skysweeper, uh, green for a 1-1. One, one. You pay 4 and a green, and you sacrifice a creature, destroy target creature with flying. I'm going to have a ton of creatures. Um, sacrificing shouldn't be too much of a problem, even though I do want to go wide. Um, but uh, so I got, I have a lot of a good amount of creatures with flying, and sometimes that may be my only way of getting through evasively. So uh, being able to sacrifice some of the um, other creatures I don't, I'm not really too fond of on the board that I have uh, to destroy a creature with flying just so I can get in there with my flyers to draw cards, uh, it seems pretty good, so we're running them. Next is Void Stalker. Um, before I get into this one, uh, I should be, this card probably going to be getting replaced tomorrow for Pongify. I got, I think I have two buddies that say that they have Pongify on them, so I'm going to be getting one of those tomorrow. But until then, we're just going to run Void Stalker. This card was amazing when you could actually, uh, shuffle generals away. But it's not that great now that, that, that you, uh, can't do that anymore. But it's two mana for a 2-1, pay, uh, blue, two colorless, put Void Stalker and target creature on top of their libraries. Uh, then those players shuffle. So it, it pretty much is removing creatures and puts commanders back to the command zone for three, so that's not too bad. Uh, next is Unravel the Aether. Um, we need our way to deal with uh, um, indestructible, especially like gods. I, I, I After the gods, I think the Glamour and Unravel the Aether are just... They're just priority in green decks now because, I mean, there's, there's always going to be a time where you're going to be running into that. Uh, so choose target artifact or enchantment. Its owner shuffles it into his or her library. So it shuffles away. Or it puts um, generals back to the command zone. Reclamation Sage. Uh, green and two colorless. 2-1. Uh, when Reclamation Sage enter the battlefield, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. So another naturalize on a stick. Uh, Trigon Predator is insane. <laughs> it's Simic. One colorless for a 2-3 flyer. Um, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. So, I mean... It's just multiple naturalizes whenever he gets in damage. It's really good. Um, next is kind of my removal. Since we're playing blue green, we don't have you know crazy good re removal like uh, like crazy like we don't have wraths. 
So we're running Aetherize, which returns all attacking creatures to their owner's hand for four. So that seems fine with me. And next, uh, yes, this card's under a dollar in the Venerals disc. Um, this is our uh, oh crap button, I guess. Uh, four mana enters the battlefield tap. You pay one, destroy all artifact creatures and enchantments. Uh, just a nice way to wipe the board. Um, and Simic, uh, Simic's not really a good color for that, so we need the we need the artifacts for help. And this is a, uh, this is under a dollar. By the way, um, another another way to wipe um, to kind of get rid of the board. Uh, another card is a uh, boom pile that's under a dollar. So if you guys are interested in a dollar format and you guys need another uh, oh crap button, uh, boom pile is a decent one. It's it, it's a chance one, but it's it's a good one. Um, now since I'm playing blue, um, I've seen other deck lists on Edric not run any uh, counter spells at all. But I think it's always important if you're playing blue to have a little bit of counter spells because there's just you know they're so um, you know they got they got so much reach because they can you can you can counter you know. You can keep them from keeping you from doing crazy things. You can keep them from doing crazy things. It's just it's just got a lot of reach. So we're running the gate, uh, mainly probably to counter counter spells or counter some sort of bomb that they're trying to do during the game. Uh, so yeah, the gate's pretty good for countering non creature spells. Uh, deprive uh, two blue the additional cost. I got a return of land to my hand. We don't really mind that too much. Uh, just counter target spell, counter spell. Um, <clears throat> I found one card on on TCG Player and it was sold out, but it was still stated at a dollar. So I counted that. So we are running counter spell in this deck. This is the most expensive card in my deck at a dollar uh, on on the dot. Uh, so yeah, so we're running it. Next, Dream Fracture, uh, pay three. Uh, I, I like to I like to say when I when I counter somebody's huge spell, I like to say sorry and give them a card and draw a card, and make them not feel as bad, so they hopefully don't target me, even though they probably still will. Uh, now on the graveyard hate, got ground seal, uh, green one colorless, when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Cards and graveyards can't be the target of spells or abilities. Next, uh, Tormod's Crypt, uh, just sacrifice exile all, um, all cards from target uh, player's graveyard. Uh, we don't run Relic of Progenitus because that is not, that is over a dollar. Uh, next is uh, against the mill players, and it gains you a little bit of life, Elixir of Immortality, one uh, paid two colorless, tap. Uh, you gain five life. Shuffle uh, elixir of immortality and your graveyard into uh, and your graveyard into uh, their owner's library. So it's pretty good. Uh, next, a little bit of life gain. Uh, Horizon Chimera. Uh, this card's insane because with how many cards I should be drawing in these games, um, this should gain me a lot of life. So it's Simic two colorless three two fl uh, flash flying trample. Whenever you draw a card, you gain one life. So pretty sweet. Uh, then we have the re uh, kind of regrowth or recursion um, setup, and that's um, restock, which is two green, three colorless. Return two target cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile restock. I really like restock in this deck because I do have a um, I do have a combo in this deck to win. Also, uh, it doesn't just win through aggression. It's got a backup win con, and I like having restock for that, so I can make sure to grab both my pieces. Uh, I also run Creeping Renaissance as my other recursion card because. Um, it can just if if I if they keep me from getting gas from drawing a ton of cards and they wrath my board, um, I really need a way back into the game and I think this is a good card to have for that. Uh, it's two green, three colorless. Choose choose a permanent type, so we're mostly going to be choosing creatures. Uh, return all cards of the chosen type from your graveyard to your hand, and it also has flashback, which is pretty sweet. So I can discard it if I need to. Uh, next. Uh, is kind of like the oh snap we're got, about to get wrath let's let's try to get some value out of that uh, and that's a uh, paradoxical outcome this is a this is a newer card uh, it's a blue and three colorless return any number of target non land non token permanents you control to their owner's hand draw a card for each card uh, returned to your hand this way so if if somebody wrath of gods uh, in response I can cast this um, and I can just pick up all my creatures and draw that many cards instead which is pretty sweet. Uh, next is Fresh Meat. Uh, it's, it's my other uh, kind of way to go against Wrath. And it's one <clears throat> one green, three colorless. Uh, put a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token on the battlefield for each creature put into your graveyard from the battlefield this turn. So in response to a Wrath of God, cast this. All my little unblockable guys turn into 3-3 uh, three, three beasts instead. That keeps me on the aggression. Uh, now into my um, evasive, don't, bl don't block me bro. Uh, kind of cards. Permeating Mass, I know it's not um, it's not evasive, 
Uh, but I think this card's hilarious and I really wanted to play it. It's one green for a 1-3. <clears throat> and whenever uh, Permeating Mass deals combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of Permeating Mass. I don't mind this too much because my deck is full of evasive creatures. Um, so I think it would be funny to be like, in the beginning, kind of be like, hey, do you want to block and turn this sweet card? Like maybe even this Fauna Shaman, the like setup card into a Permeating Mass or let me draw a card. Um, and just see if the all the boards go crazy with turning into permeating mass. I would like to see if that happens. Uh, next is Treetop Scout. Uh, it basically has flying. It's green for a 1-1 one, one Treetop Scout. A scout can't be blocked except by creatures with flying. Uh, Spire Tracer, same thing. Uh, Moth Dust Changeling, 1 blue for a 1-1 one, one Changeling. Uh, tap and untap creature you control. Uh, this guy gains flying. And then Wing Crafter, a blue soul bond to another creature. Both those creatures have uh, flying. Zephyr Sprite, one for a 1-1 one, one flyer. Why not? It's I mean, it, it all looks basic. I mean, you guys know that these cards are under a dollar. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> but they're just so good in the Edric deck. Uh, Cloud Sprite, one blue for a 1-1 one, one flying. Uh, Cloud Sprite may block only creatures with flying. That's fine. We don't mind that. Cloudfin Raptor, uh, blue flying evolve um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield. If it has a greater power or toughness, put a 1-1 counter on it. So it gets bigger as it goes. It's not going to get too big. Hypnotic Siren, it's a blue for a 1-1. One, one, uh, flying. Uh, you can bestow it, though. If you bestow it, you can uh, gain control of somebody's creature. So you control and check cre uh, creature. It gives them plus 1, plus 1 in flying. So you can use this early or late game to take just a huge bomb and give it plus 1, plus 1 in flying. So it's pretty sweet. It can steal stuff. Uh, next is Triton Shore Stalker, which is probably the best one drop in my deck, uh, just because it's your one, it's it's the only one drop that just can't be blocked straight up, um, which is pretty sweet. And then uh, now on to our two drops, uh, we got Furtive Homunculus. It's a uh, it's a uh, blue and one colors for a two one. It has Skulk, so this creature can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. So later game, maybe it's really good to get in on one side, like maybe the guy playing the Timmy deck uh, just keeps on bashing and drawing like, more cards. Uh, Thrumming Bird's really good because I have a couple of evolved creatures. I mean, yeah, yeah, I think it's evolved creatures, the one that just keeps on putting plus one plus one counters on it. Uh, so I, I really like this card in here for that. Uh, it's, you know, it's a blue and one colorless for a 1-1 one, one flyer, and when it deals combat damage to a player, I may proliferate. So I could also use this as, like, a hug kind of card, too, to help people, um, get counters up on some of their permanents also. But it's mainly just for, um, it's mainly just for beating it, beating it evasively and drawing a card and just sometimes synergizing with some of my, uh, evolved creatures. Uh, next is, uh, the shadow creatures, um... Thalico Sentry, it's a blue and one colorless for a 1-2 in Shadow. This creature can't, can't, uh, can, can, yeah, can't be blocked except by creatures with uh, Shadow. So pretty sweet. Next, th Sal uh, Thalico Seer, uh, two blue for a 1-1 one, one Shadow. And then when it leaves play, draw a card. And next is Escape Artist. Escape Artist is unblockable. It's two for unblockable 1-1. One, one, and I can pay blue, discard a card. For my hand to return uh, artist to its owner's hand, so I can protect it if I need to. Uh, Looter Ilkor, uh, blue one colorless for a one one shadow. Uh, whenever Looter Ilkor deals combat damage to an opponent, draw a card then discard a card. Uh, if you're attacking with a bunch of creatures, make sure this is the what is it, the first first one on your stack, so then you can draw all the cards and then you can finally loot. So you can actually get, you know once you look at your mess of a hand, you can be like okay I don't want this land and do that pretty much you just ditch a land every time and try to draw more gas uh, next metathran soldier a blue and one colorless for a one one and it, it says it, it just it can't be blocked uh jessian infiltrator uh simic for a two two and once again can't be blocked pretty sweet aether figment uh blue and one colorless one one uh can't be blocked uh kicker three if it was kicked it enters the battlefield with two one one counters on it that's another thing i can proliferate uh but most of the time we're not going to worry about that uh, Flitter Step uh, Edeline, uh, blue, one colorless for a 1-1, one, one, uh, bestow 6. Uh, it can't be blocked, and Enchant Creature gets plus 1, plus 1, and can't be blocked. So I can bestow it on something. I have one card that can get really big that can that can uh, be a good bestow target that I'll show you later. Uh, Thalicus Dream Sower, uh, blue and two colors for a 1-1 one, one Shadow. And you may choose not to untap Thalicus Dream Sower during your untap step. If Dream Sower damages an opponent, tap target creature. As long as Thalicus... 
uh, Dream Star remains tapped, that creature does not untap during its controller's untap phase. So it's a way to lock down like a really big problem creature. Like maybe somebody gets a huge like it that betrays or something crazy with Annihilate. It can just lock it down after it deals damage to it, which is hilarious. Next is Cephalid Path Mage, uh, blue two colors for a 1-2, and it can't be blocked. Um, sacrifice uh, this guy to make target creature uh, unblockable until end of turn, which we probably won't do that, but who knows. Uh, Phantom Warrior, two blue and a colorless for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, Phantom Warrior can't be blocked. Uh, Nurk Invisimancer, uh, two blue, one colorless for a 2-1. Uh, Nurk Invisimancer is unblockable, and when it enters the battlefield, target creature is unblockable until end of turn. Uh, Latch Seeker, two blue, one colors, three one. Latch Seeker is unblockable. You guys see the theme here, right? Uh, Elusive Crisis, uh, Simic, one colorless, zero four. Elusive Crisis is unblockable. Evolve. So I already told you guys what Evolve does. So, all right, now on the ways that we we win the game. Psychosis Crawler. Uh, this card is absolutely nutter butters in this deck. Uh, five mana for a star star. Psychosis pow uh, Crawler's power and toughness is equal to the number of cards in your hand. Uh, whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. Uh, that's insane in this deck with how, how much with the potential card draw I can get in this deck. Uh, this this card won't stick around usually, I don't think. So I don't know. We'll see. But this is this is that target to give unblockable to. This is a really good one to bestow unblockable to. Uh, next uh, next way we win the game is through just pumping all of our creatures. We're gonna be putting out tons of little one ones and stuff and tons of unblockable guys. Might as well beef them up. So Beastmaster Ascension is a, is a green, two colors. I can't believe it's under a dollar, but it was reprinted, thankfully. <laughs> Whenever a creature you control attacks, you may put a quest counter on it. Uh, as long as Beastmaster Ascension has seven or more quest counters on it, uh, creatures you control get plus five, plus five. That seems really good. That's a game ender right there. This is a game ending card. Next, I decided to run Overrun. I thought it was interesting. You know, I, I thought of a couple different cards, but I finally just went to Overrun just because it's just a solid card in this deck, you know. You buy, put out a ton of creatures, get like 10 creatures, give them all plus 3, plus 3. That's 40 damage right there with tra uh, 40 trample damage. Uh, so it seems pretty good. And next one, finally I found a place, a home for this card. I really loved this card when it was first re uh, when it was first printed. Uh, so we can finally play it. A biomass mutation, it's uh, you pay, you know, either it's green, blue, green, blue, hybrid. Um, X, and then creatures you control become XX until end of turn. So late game... Just make them all huge, you know. And then, uh, last but not least, we have our alternate win condition, which is Biovisionary, which is our co which is the uh, which is our combo uh, way to win. If if we can't get in, if we can't win through aggression, uh, and they they kind of start stripping us of all of our um, you know all of our gas, like keeping us from drawing cards, keeping creatures on the board. This is the way we win late game. Uh, Biovisionary is Simic, uh, one colorless, it's 2-3. At the beginning of the end step, if you control four or more creatures named Biovisionary, you win the game. I know, but we can't run more than one of each copy of, of a card in Commander. But uh, we can combo through these two ways. Uh, through Polymorphous Rush and through Infinite Reflection. Infinite Reflection is the better combo because it's I think it's one mana less to do. Um, but what we do is we have a bunch of creatures out with, and then, um, we don't want to play Biovisionary out until we have one of these combo pieces with Biovisionary. Um, <clears throat> so we play Biovisionary and then we either Polymorphous Rush, uh, pay three, then Strive three times, I believe. So that's, uh, or no, Strive two times. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you will pay, uh, seven, seven for, for this, um, targeting three other things. Uh, so Biovisionary can win. And um, Infinite Reflection is just sweet because it's just six mana. You slam it on Biovisionary, and uh, when it enters the battlefield attached to a creature, each other non-toad creature you control becomes a copy of that creature. Non-toad creatures you control enter the battlefield as a copy of Enchanted Creature. So it automatically just turns everything into Biovisionary. Um, so yeah, um, this the, um, the the yeah. If I didn't say it already, don't play Biovisionary without one of these combos ready. So you're either gonna win. Uh, what is it like um, nine to ten mana? Um, you're gonna hold on once you have nine to ten mana. You'll play, you know, biovisionary polymorphous rush strive two times, or you'll play uh, biovisionary infinite reflection for a win. So yeah, guys, that is my Edric Spy Master of Trust uh, Dollar General. Um, if you guys are interested in drawing a ton of cards, if you guys like playing little weenie creatures and people looking at you like. Well, like this is crazy just playing a bunch of little one ones 
um, you guys should give this deck a try. It seems good. It's uh, it's extremely cheap. I believe on um, on TCG you can buy the deck for I think it's like twenty bucks or something like that. Maybe a little bit more. I know online on Card Hoarder I believe it's like ten dollars. Uh, but you guys can all check that out along with the uh, deck list on. Uh, on the link I'm going to put in the description below. Uh, it's going to take you to tappedout.net, and you guys can check out the deck list there. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think of the Dollar General theme. Let me know what you guys think of this deck. Let me know if you guys think it's sweet. Let me know if you guys think um, if you guys are interested in Dollar General, because uh, I'm already getting a bunch of buddies into it right now. Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, take it easy, guys. Bow, bow.